The man with the blacked out van stood on top of a hillside road. He stared down at the dead city below, gazing out at the empty streets with a look of amazement on his face. He stood there for a while, taking it all in. Then he spoke to the woman he'd chained up in his van. Maddie? Yes, sir? Something's happened out there. Something incredible. My plans for you have changed. Are you gonna let me go, sir? You wanna go home? Yes. I wanna see my mom. Well, I'm sorry, but I think she's dead. Everybody is. You know, you're really ugly when you cry. Why don't you shut the fuck up? You hungry? I'll grab some breakfast. parked his van in the middle of the street and stepped out into the center of town. He looked around at the empty shops and smiled. This was his world now. He walked to the market to grab some breakfast when he suddenly stopped in front of another store that caught his eye. The sign above read, Santa Mira Guns and Ammo. He stared at an AK-47 in the store's display case. Hallelujah. He smashed through the window with a garbage can and stepped inside. Hot damn. Q code and wood elf. Present the edge of sleep. Starring Mark Fishbach. Created by Jake Emanuel and Willie Block. July 5th, 10 a.m. Linda smelled a vomit. Just minutes ago, I had forced her to throw up the sleeping pill she'd taken. Want some water? I've got a bottle in the car. Thanks. Neither of us wanted to believe what was happening, but it seems so obvious now. This plague or outbreak or whatever the hell it was killed you while you were sleeping. How are you feeling? Sleepy. I was hoping that'd make her laugh. It didn't. Listen, Dave, we don't know each other really well, but I'm gonna need your help. If this is a widespread pandemic, no one is coming to save us. Do you understand that? We're on our own. Fuck. I need to know exactly how you're feeling. Have you been up for 24 hours, 36 hours? How tired are you? I'm okay. I think I'm okay far more scared than I am tired. If you start to get drowsy, you have to tell me. Got it? We can't fuck around here. Because if you nod off once, that's it. It's over. I guess we should start pounding coffee and candy then. No. No sugar. It makes you crash. It lowers the erection in your brain. So, what do we do from here? Get in. Where are we going? Back to the hospital. We're gonna need to buy ourselves some time. And the ER's got a stash of modafinil. Modafinil! If you wanna stay up for three days straight, you can find your local dealer, you can test your fate, or do it like they do with your local Sam. To modafinil in the form of your heart. The next 48 hours are brought to you by modafinil. Stay awake, stay alert, stay alive. Take Modafinil. Mo
Daffodil is the sports car of all performance enhancing stimulants. It's the fastest, the smoothest, and gives you the most mileage. It was first developed as a treatment for narcolepsy, but by the Iraq war, the military was using it to keep soldiers awake for 20 to 40 hour missions. It was tested on F-17 fighter pilots, Black Hawk pilots, paratroopers, marines. The results showed that for 40 hour periods, modafinil helped maintain alertness, feelings of well-being, cognitive function, and situational awareness without any of the side effects of amphetamines. In other words, it was a super drug. Hey Dave. Yeah? Why did you force me to puke up the sleeping pills? I could have told her the truth. That something she said triggered a dream I had with a talking whale. But I didn't think telling her about my fucked up dreams was the best idea at the moment. Well, I don't know. I just had this feeling rush over me. A feeling? It's hard to explain. It felt like deja vu mixed with a panic attack. Well, that's pretty weird. It's not the weirdest thing that's happened today. We got to the hospital at a quarter to eleven. Hello? Becca? Dr. Gordon? Fucking hell. What? The doctor must have told the staff to clear out. Hello? Okay. First up, call anyone you know who might be awake. Tell them not to go to sleep and to meet us here. Okay. In ten minutes, I want to prep the cadavers for pathology. What? If we want to find out what is going on, we have to examine the bodies. Oh, and you know how to do that? Kind of. Well, kind of? Hey, Dave. See any doctors around? No? Okay, well shit. I guess that leaves us. Make your calls. What's up, bro? Why the hell are you calling so late? Are you okay? Yeah, man, just gaming. I'm about to collect a bounty and sack the fuck out. Oh, listen, I need you to drive down to the hospital. Oh, shit. What's going on, man? You alright? I think it's better if I explain everything when you get here. Yo, you freaking me out right now. Did something happen to you at the party last night? Yeah. You just gotta tell me right now if you're fucking deformed or something. Uh, just get over here. I'll meet you outside the ER in 15 minutes. Okay. Okay, I'm putting on my pants. Mateo arrived shortly. When he stepped out of the car, I could tell he was shaken. Hey. Dave, man, what's going on? Where the hell is everyone? On the ride over, he must have noticed the emptiness. Santa Mira, a bustling city of 50,000, was now a ghost town. And a vast feeling of isolation was all around us. Hi. Mateo, this is Linda. Linda, this is my friend Mateo. We work together at Dexel. What the fuck is going on, man? We don't know exactly. It started last night around 4 a.m. All we know is we should be. He listened carefully as we caught him up to speed. Mateo was a veteran. He'd seen his share of shit. But this was something else entirely. I mean, you can't be 100% sure it's sleep, right? It's just so fucking crazy. Yeah, it is fucking crazy, but look at the facts. Everyone who went to sleep last night is dead, and everyone who stayed awake is still alive. And when my friend took a nap this morning, she was dead instantly. So as crazy as it sounds, it seems to be connected to sleep. I gotta call my mom. She lives in El Paso. I gotta call my sister. Hey, take all the time you need, man. Just remember that with every minute that passes, we'll grow more and more tired. I'm going to need the both of you to help. Thanks, Linda. We got it. We'll be in in a minute. I'll be in room four. Hey, do you 
You want a minute alone to call your family? No, nope, that's okay. I'm sure they're okay, you know? I'll text them real quick. Okay. Do you trust this chick? Linda? Man, I don't know. I guess so. I just met her last night. She's an ER nurse, so she's pretty intense. But that's probably a good thing, given the situation. Are you sure she's a nurse? Yeah. Well, she works right here. I don't know, bro. I know plenty of fucking nurses. From Iraq, from the VA, and she don't act like no nurse. Well, how do nurses act? It's not like her. Well, she's a little... odd. But it probably doesn't help that we're all running on no sleep. It's funny, man. You haven't been able to sleep your whole fucking life. Maybe that'll help you now. He was right, of course. As a kid, I was in and out of doctor's offices. Scientists and medical practitioners love a good enigma. It's fun for them. It's just not that fun if you're the enigma. And that's what I was. We saw every kind of doctor, psychologist, sleep specialist, neurologist, but no one could give us an answer. Why the fuck couldn't I sleep? Hello. Hi, Dr. Weiss. Are you the father? Yes, this is my husband, John. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Dave, would it be okay if I talked to your mommy and daddy in my office for a minute? Yeah. We'll be right back, sweetie. So, all of these concerns we're having, the weight gain, the fevers, the mood swings, these are all side effects of the sleep deprivation. Okay. Dave is suffering from extreme exhaustion. Now, my concern is that as a five-year-old boy, this could lead to developmental issues later. I'm sorry. It's okay. Would you like a tissue? Thank you. So I'd like to ask you a couple of questions that might help to clarify Dave's condition. Yes, please, by all means. Has Dave had any recent problems at school? Oh, well, actually, we've, um, we've taken him out of school for the moment. And how is his home life? What do you mean? Well, have there been any problems at home? Any marital issues? <sighs> well, you know, sure, but... Uh, who doesn't? We love each other. But we have our problems, our frustrations. Are these frustrations ever taken out on Dave? In what way? In any way. Are you asking me if I hit my son? John. Is that what you're asking me? My concern, Mr. and Mrs. Torres, is that these nightmares that Dave is having are signs of post-traumatic stress disorder. What's that? Remember. This was in the 90s, before Afghanistan and Iraq. My mom isn't a moron. It's just that PTSD wasn't well known back then. Post-traumatic stress occurs when a person has stress or anxiety related to traumatic events in their life. We see it a lot in soldiers and veterans. That's just great, doctor, but we're not dealing with a Marine here. This is my five-year-old son we're talking about. When we see signs of PTSD in children, it usually comes from physical or sexual abuse. That's it. We're leaving. John, please. I've heard enough, Trace. We're done here. Dave. We're going now, buddy. We're going to go see a better doctor, okay? Okay. Come on, Trace. Let's go. I'm sorry, doctor. This is Linda Russo. I'm a registered nurse at the Santa Mira Hospital. The time is approximately 11.36 a.m. July 5th, 2019. Assisting me with the pathology report is Dave... What's your last name? Torres. Dave Torres and Mateo... Mateo Leon. I'm a Capricorn. I like CrossFit and college basketball. Mateo. What? We are examining the cadavers of three individuals. Dwayne Bradley, 16-year-old male checked into the hospital on the evening of July 4th for third-degree burns. John Trent, 53-year-old male, checked into the hospital for severe heartburn. 
and Brittany Woods, 46 year old female. She was a nurse working the early morning shift at Tanamira. Time of death was between 9 and 10 a.m. We'll begin with Mr. Bradley. I'm shaving the hair around his head in order to make a clean incision as we remove the skull cap. Okay, the head is shaved and properly secured. I will begin to make the incision. Pass the bones off. Oh, this one? Yes. Uh -huh. Thank you. And... I am cutting the paradial half a centimeter above the left ear. Oh. No, what the fuck? Shit! Oh, God damn it! I must have hit a capillary above the ear. Is it on my face? You can use the sink. God damn it! It's all right, it's just a little blood. I didn't see any splash on you. I'm a nurse, I get sprayed all the time. Do you even know what the hell you're doing right now? Look, I'm not a pathologist, okay? But I'm trying to... You're trying to what? Hey. I'm trying to determine the cause of death. Then what? You're gonna cure us? Hey! Maybe you should calm down. You don't want to tire yourself out. Hey! Look. Is that normal? What the fuck? Step back. There appears to be some sort of gas or smoke rising out of the subject's head. The vapor seems to be rising from the incision I made with the bone saw. I'm continuing with the incision. You sure about that? <laughs> the smoke appears to be trapped inside the skull. It has the odor of burning almost all the way around. And I'm removing the skull cap. <laughs> the smoke is very thick. It's obscuring the brain. I'm fanning it away to get a clear sight. And... Holy shit. What? What is that? I don't know. You're watching KWNI Evening News. Today, negotiations continued at Camp David, where President Clinton presided over peace talks between Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin and Palestinian leader John? Yasser Arafat. John, can you get Both that? sides have still failed to reach an agreement. Hello? Mrs. Torres. Yes, mask is calling? This is Dr. Weiss. Oh. Doctor, I'd just like to apologize again for how my husband acted in your office today. He's been under a lot of stress lately. That's quite all right. I can understand how overwhelming this all must be for both of you. Grace, who's on the phone? Uh, it's just the office. I'm sorry, Doctor, but this isn't a great time to talk. If I could just have a moment of your time, I'd really like to speak to you about David. <sighs> all right. How many doctors have you taken David to? Name one. Dr. Jessup. The neuropsychologist. Seen him. And Dr. Brundle, and Dr. West, and Dr. Pretorius. We've seen them all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I figured as much. The problem is that with all of our breakthroughs in modern medicine, we still know very little about sleep. We know even less about dreaming. You're being passed around from doctor to doctor, Mrs. Torres, because nobody really knows how to help your son. Why did you call here, doctor? Was it to tell me that there's no hope for David? No, no. Of course not. I have a son of my own, Mrs. Torres. And as a father, I want you to know that I feel 
for what you and your husband must be going through. We don't need empathy. We need help. And I want to help you, really, I do. It's just that, well, do you think that you and your husband would be open to treating David with... untraditional therapies? No. No way in hell. Why not? Because it's insane. Dr. Weiss thinks it will work. That guy is a fucking quack. But what are our other options? Another doctor? We have seen every goddamn specialist on the West Coast. Then we fly to the East Coast. Boston, New York, Philadelphia. And what will they say that's different from what we've already heard? Tracy, you're talking about a treatment that is not FDA approved. There's no research, no data. Do you really want to take that risk with our son? The only risk is if we don't try something new. What's this thing called again? Sensory processing therapy. Okay. For the treatment to work, we'd really need to try it for 18 months. Jesus Christ. He can have visitors after six months, but for that first period, it can only be me. Where? Somewhere remote. We can rent a cabin in the woods, maybe in Oregon or Montana. We don't have the money to rent a second house. It won't be a house. It'll be a, a cabin. We can dip into our savings if we have to. Those savings are for Dave's college tuition. Well, he's not going to go to college if we don't do something. It's just so cruel, Trace. You want to keep our boy isolated for a year and a half? Without any friends or family, without his dad. Is that the life you want for him? What I want is a night where I'm not woken up by my son screaming in terror. What's it going to be tonight, John? What do you think? Chase. Is it going to be the dream where there's glass in Mommy and Daddy's eyes? Stop it. Or maybe it'll be the dream where rats come and bite off his fingers and wee-wee. Please. Or maybe it'll be the one where Daddy chops Mommy's head off. Stop! <sighs> what do you think happens to a boy who dreams like that every night? Does he grow up to be Einstein or Bill Gates? No! He grows up to be the other kind of man you see in the paper, the kind of man in an orange jumpsuit whose neighbors say, Oh, he seems so normal! Oh, God. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Why don't you wait back in the living room? Dinner will be ready in five minutes. Okay. It's the right thing to do, John. I know it is. Who's going to tell him? We both will. One p.m., two, three. The hours rolled on. We helped Linda look at five more bodies. I'm cutting around the skull. And what we found was always the same. And I'm removing the skull cap. A black triangle. The subject appears to have burns on the surface of his brain. It's the same as we found before. The burn is approximately two centimeters wide and a centimeter deep. It looks like a black triangle burnt under the subject's frontal lobe. It's the army. That's what I think. They got bunkers a mile underground. I had a friend in Iraq who was a guard at one of these undisclosed facilities. They were experimenting on monkeys. He'd hear them scream day and night. They'd wheel these little monkeys up and down corridors. Their eyes were white from being blinded. Their skin was peeling off. Once, he saw a little monkey with fucking muscles, man. It looked like John Cena. They must have given a steroids trying to make it into a super soldier. I think something escaped from one of those labs. Maybe a virus that rose up through the vents. <laughs> Did, did you say a monkey that looks like John Cena? I'm serious. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Maybe it's because it's so, I'm so tired, but that's so fucking stupid. You wouldn't be laughing if you were in a cage with one of those fucking things. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. If it isn't a government super virus, then what is this? What else could possibly burn a triangle into your fucking brain? Okay, I think it's time for a modafinil. These are 600 milligrams each. We should probably split them in half. Okay. And I don't think it's the government. They like to tinker with things like smallpox, influenza, SARS, mutations. That's all child's play compared to whatever the hell this is. 
What the hell? It was my phone that was ringing. Well, who is it? When I saw who was calling, my heart almost stopped. Katie? Dave? Oh, my God. <sighs> Katie, where are you? Are you okay? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of freaking out right now. Where is everyone? It's okay. Do you think you can make it over to the hospital? I think so. Uh... I'm on the corner of Main Street and Laurel, and there's nobody here. All the shops are empty. I'm just so happy to hear your voice. What the hell happened last night? I tried calling you 20 times. Uh, I was at Randy's party last night, and there was this guy, Gus. That fucking drug dealer. He gave me something. He said it was MDMA, but I think it was speed, because I've been tweaking out and completely wired for the last, like, 15 hours. Katie, just stay where you are. I'm coming to pick you up. Oh, there's a car coming. I'm waving it down. He sees me. I just... He just flashed his lights. It's someone driving a large white van. Katie, can you see through his windows? Uh, no. They're really dark. Hold on, he's rolling his window down. Hey there. Hi. Where are you heading? Uh, Santa Mira Hospital? Katie, you need to get out of there right now. What? Run! The Edge of Sleep stars Mark Fishbach as Dave, Pat Haley as the Trespasser, Kara Santana as Linda, Victor Rasuk as Mateo, Alex Esso as Katie, Joshua Leonard as Dr. Weiss, Marsha Cross as Tracy, Rob Morrow as John, and Sander Argabright as young Dave. Additional performances by Rose Gilroy, Jason Nahum, Matthew Lackwix, and Jake Emanuel. Written by Jake Emanuel and Willie Block. Directed by Jake Emanuel. Produced by Q Code, Daylight Media, and Mark Fishbach. Recorded, mixed, and mastered by Salt Audio. Original music and score by Jamie Sheffman and Noah Gersh for Salt Audio. Sound design by Maria Mora and Juan David Chaparro Perez for Audio for Media. Edited by Zach Jurich. Associate producer, Tess Ryan. Script supervisor, Sam Beasley. Production support provided by James Gelberg. Casting by Chelsea Block and Marisol Roncalli at Atomic Honey. Art by Matt Taylor and Aaron Salazar. Special thanks to Jeff Roy, Mark Holden, Kirsty Jan Verdal, and Celeste Armstrong. The Edge of Sleep is a Q-Code production. If you enjoy the show, subscribe to The Edge of Sleep on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your favorite audio dramas. You can also visit our merch store at qcodemedia.com slash the edge of sleep.